What were you working on today out there? Uh, yeah, so that was just uh, the coaching staff and the training staff. They're just starting to ease me in. Um, from the combine, I, I got I had like a minor little injury, and I've just been rehabbing that. So for them, it's all about again just easing me in, um, just getting me out on the field, seeing how I move and all that. How did you hurt yourself at the combine? Uh, it was it was during my forty yard dash. Yeah. It was, uh, had a chance to speak to or meet uh, Tyron Smith yet? No, no, I haven't, but trust me, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> well, what's the biggest thing you, you feel like you, you need to work on in your game? Yeah, um, I'd say uh, just my pad level, um, you know, staying as low as possible throughout the snap, making sure that I don't get out leveraged by defensive linemen. Uh, that's number one. And also number two, hand placement. I feel like at times in the in the past game, specifically, my hands will get a little bit wide, which will leave my chest wide open and exposed. So definitely those two. Are you expecting, I guess, when phase three starts to be a little more involved when you mention that you have a little something that's could you repeat, to you? Could you repeat when that? When phase three starts, when the OTAs get into the next level, you think you'll be more involved when you talked about whatever injury you have? Uh, you know, I think I will, but at the end of the day, I'm just going to leave it up to the coaching staff and the training staff from what they see out of me and let them assess all that. You, you obviously started uh, playing football a little later in high school. Like, do, you ever, do you ever go back and watch the old clips and, and like, think about how far you've come or like, get mad at yourself for doing certain things or stuff like that? So, no, but um, it's funny you say that because my, uh, my offensive line coach from college sent me a clip of myself from my junior year of high school. And it's it's honestly just night and day from you know what I what I was moving like then and what I'm moving like now and it's it's just crazy to think about you know coming coming you know so far from the player I was in high school to now. Coming out of high school, uh, were you a three star? Yes, sir. All right. What what were the other schools you were considering and and. Uh, and what made you choose Penn State? Yeah, uh, I was fortunate enough to get a couple a uh, couple big schools. Um, but the top three was Penn State, Ohio State, and Michigan. And for Penn State, it was a lot closer to home. I'm from Maryland, so it's about a four-hour drive. Then um, they stress academics a lot, which meant a lot for my parents. Then also every time I visited, it was always a good time. They treated me well, they treated my family well. Was Maryland the possibility that they uh, they didn't offer me until signing day, so no, I wasn't. <laughs> if they had offered earlier, would that would things have been a little different? Yeah, it would have, but you know, it is what it is. Anything else? Wait, you um, do you think they're gonna have you just focus on left tackle? I know you're working on an injury now, but yep. they're gonna keep you on one side, or they're gonna work at both sides. Uh, I I don't know, but for me, I'm always about you know just being prepared for the moment. So nothing's going to change for me. I'm going to continue to work both left or right, no matter what. But um, yeah, I'm not sure yet. How hard is that? We always hear from tackles about mm -hmm. switching sides and it's yeah. like learning a new language. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think it depends on the that specific lineman. Uh, for myself, it. At times, like when I first started practicing right side, it was a little bit difficult just because I've never really played. But um, you know, spending the last the last year and a half practicing, um, you know, reps on the right side, I'm a lot more comfortable at it now. But I think for just any football player learning a new position, it just comes down to reps. And you know, for some guys, it might take them a little bit more reps to learn something, whereas for another guy, it might take them a little less reps. So. What was the injury at the combine? Uh, it was just a, it was a quad strain. Yeah. Anything else? Are you alright? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How's it feel to finally be here and get your jersey and all that stuff? Uh, it feels unbelievable. If you want to be honest, uh, lifelong dream that I've had since I was a young kid, uh, coming from a small town and small school, and being the first one to sign a visual letter of intent from my high school and to be here. Um, in National Football League, it feels unbelievable. So it's storybook ending. What's the last week <coughs> for you? Um, really, you know, just a draft party, having the whole family down, getting to see everybody, um, continue to train and prep as long as that process has been going because at the end of the day, football is still football. It's not going anywhere. We're still playing the game. Um, so, yeah, just with the draft last week, had a whole bunch of people, a lot of family coming around. Um, 
seen a lot of familiar faces and everything and uh, just training throughout that process as well. What did you do as far as training to get prepared? Uh, yeah, me and my trainer, uh, Chris Vaughn, at Aspiration Gym in Louisville, Kentucky, we've been going at it since the draft process and literally just no days off, uh, only taking uh, Sundays off. So uh, just been consistent at it, um, you know, breaking down route tree, uh, top of the route, still doing speed training, shrimp training, everything like that. Um, specifically getting into the routes because we're starting to get into football now with all the tests taken, 40s and shuttles and three cone, all that's over with. So uh, just getting out running routes, trying to find, you know, four or five different ways to run the same route and just be a great route runner. There's a lot of receivers in the NFL that you see them catch the ball and immediately get down. They yeah. catch the ball and they run out of bounds. No doubt. You don't do that. Yeah, that ain't me. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why? Like, what about you makes it seem like you crave the physical aspect of the time? Well, I just love football. I think I love football and I love life. And I think that uh, part of my calling card is to be a good football player. And I think that the Lord has blessed me with some talents and abilities and a confidence that's um, out of this world. And I think that every time I get the ball in my hands, you know, I'm just ready to punish somebody every single time I get it. That's just a, like that's the way I like to play the game. Um, getting in the weight room and getting stronger and uh, being physically outmatching guys, you know, knowing that defensive backs don't really want to tackle and you'll give it to a linebacker at the same time. Uh, so just every time I get the ball, I'm trying to make something happen with it and just um, running through guys, just my way of imposing my will. Your, your brother was a defensive lineman. And yeah. Know, how much did trying to uh, run through him <laughs> help you build up your strength once you get like, got out there in the field and started playing yourself and all that stuff? Uh, tremendously, because uh, my brother led the NAIA in sacks in 2020 at uh, Campbell's University, and just working with him throughout my entire time growing up, uh, you know, he's always been the big brother. He's three years older than me. Um, always trying to, you know, outmatch big bro and everything. You know, me and him, when we were even little, playing knee football. He played on his knees. I play standing up, trying to run him over all the time. Uh, even getting ready for the senior bowl and everything. You know, we're full padded up. Uh, you know, going head to head all the time, and then just him being a good hand fighter and everything. That just teaching me how to be a receiver at the same time because those defense alignment, they're just as athletic as us, they're just bigger, you know, so learning the game that way. What do you think when you hear people compare your demo? Uh, I think it's an amazing honor, you know. It's an honor to be mentioned to somebody that's such a um, highly touted player and who is of such a high caliber and has even more potential to get into as he continues to play the game, uh, has been extremely consistent throughout his time in the NFL. And for me to be in that same uh, category that people think of us in, um, it's unbelievable. And for us to have that similar style of play and um, – for me, I'm still going to continue to add on to my game because I'm still young and I'm just now getting my feet wet. I think I've hardly scratched the potential of who I am as a player. I think the yards at the catch thing is just something that I do. Um, but, yeah, just trying to elevate my game even past that label of just being a gadget player and a weapon and all those things. Have you talked at all to, to Aaron since you can drop it? Um, yeah, I only talked to him on draft night. Um, you know, I te I've texted him the last couple of nights. I'm just like a little kid. Like, you know, he's the, he's the adult. He's the MVP, Hall of Famer, all those type of things. So I'm just like a little kid talking to him all the time, texting him, uh, trying to see what he's done and stuff consistent in the league, uh, the things that he's done to work on his mental health, uh, how he's kept his body alive so long, you know. Um, so I've had conversations with him. He said I can stay in his guest house if I want to. So, yeah, me and him are close. That's going to be my dog while I'm here. <laughs> no doubt. You talked about elevating your game. What, what areas do you feel like you need to improve on? Um, really just the releases and the top of the route things because I was really pigeonholed to the slot at, at Western Kentucky. Uh, I think just getting out of my shell and uh, – things that I did in high school, you know, I got to line up on the outside in high school um, all the time, getting able to uh, do my releases, get to the top of the route, really run those curls uh, 12, 15, 18 yards, uh, roll into those daggers and those deep digs at 15, 18 yards too, just really pushing my depth on these routes. I think I can stop as good as anybody going left and right. Uh, I think I can stop as good as anybody at 10 yards, but really just adding to my game and breaking it down piece to piece, getting able to run those routes at 12, 15, 18 yards, uh, that's the next step of my game. And when I get to that point, um, there's nothing no one's going to be able to do with me because I'm hell to bring down. How much, how much did the Ohio State game help your draft stock, and what do you remember from that day? Um, the Ohio State game was a, a tremendous honor to play in that arena, um, having 100,000-plus people who none of them are cheering for you at small Western Kentucky. Um, just my feelings going into that game overall was just um, I have nothing to lose and everything to gain from that game. Um, and against uh, power five competition. I bought out every single time I played anybody. So competition was never a question for me. Uh, I think I just answered a lot of questions from, you know, the critics and politics and everything, trying to see if I can really match that level of intensity um, playing against a highly touted Ohio State team. Um, but overall, I, I felt free, as free as I've ever felt in the game, uh, playing against such high competition and uh, yeah, it was a great it was a great day, even though uh, we weren't able to come out victorious in that game. But um, I think a lot of our guys on our team um, made a name for themselves in that game. Do you want to say the anti-game? 
with any compliments or things from the Ohio State players after the game from the coaches or players? Um, I just talked to uh, Marvin and Emeka after the game a little bit, and they were just saying uh, how tough of a player I was. Um, and I was just giving my gratitude to them as well, knowing how good of players they are. I think the uh, upper echelon of guys always know each other and always rooting for each other at the same time. Have you uh, gotten to talk to Garrett? Uh, I've talked to Garrett. He was just telling me how excited that he was that I was here, excited to work with me and everything. And I feel the same way towards him. Uh, when he was at Lake Travis in high school and I was um, coming up in high school and everything, I was idolizing him, uh, followed him on Instagram and everything. So I've been following his journey for a real long time. Uh, even got to meet Mike Williams today. So um, these veteran guys, you know, I'm going to get the most out of them that they're going to get out of me. I'm just trying to grow with them as much as they can grow with me and trying to learn everything that I can from them because at the end of the day I'm a young guy no matter the talent or ability um, they've sustained themselves in this league for long enough and that's what I'm trying to do as well. Are you going to take Aaron up on the uh, the guest house? Uh, yeah I damn, will, right? damn right will. Yeah <laughs> yeah, no rent free man I'll I throw, I throw him a little bit you know <laughs> but yeah I'm a young guy I'm just trying to stay with him you know bother him just be a little fly on the wall. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank, you, no Thank you, Thank you. I appreciate it. Todd, your uh, first week uh, with the Jets of Gold. It's been, it's been really good. Um, you know, a lot of meetings, um, installing the offense and, and stuff and getting to know the guys. Um, it's been a lot of fun and everything I've expected so far. So it's been good. How, how long after getting drafted did you hear from uh, Joe Tittman? Immediately. Yeah. yeah, I think he was the first person uh, that I texted, um, you know, after I got my name called. How is it going to be to be able to run behind him again? It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, obviously, had a lot of success running behind him and, you know, the line that he held down in Wisconsin. So, um, it'll be a lot of fun. Excited to, to be around him, um, play with him again. Have you gotten to meet Brees yet or talk to him? Uh, I talked to Brees a little bit. Um, not, I haven't met him yet, but um, even, you know, while I was still in college, had a little bit of contact with him um, just through Instagram and stuff. But, um yeah, he hit me up after the draft, too, so um, a couple guys on the team. But, um, yeah, I've, I've talked to him a little bit, so excited to, to build that relationship. There's a lot of talk shortly after the draft about the thunder and lightning combination that mm -hmm. the two of you can bring. Where does the physical style of play that, that you play with come from? Um, honestly, you know, it's, it's something that has been um, – it's just been the way I've played my whole life. Um, you know, it was, it was kind of my uh, advantage um, as a young kid, kind of being a little bit bigger than everybody else and, um, you know, have a wrestling background. So ever since I was, I was a, a young kid, that's kind of been, um, you know, my style of, of athletics is, is just being more physical than everybody else. How has wrestling helped you on the football field? Um, I mean, you know, obviously a lot physically, you know, the understanding leverage, um, hand fighting, things like that. Um, but I think more so the, the mental part of it, um, the discipline, you know, uh, from a super young age, having to cut weight, things like that, and learning what's good for you, what's not to, to put in your body, um, all those things I've, I've been able to, to carry with me. What did you want to reclassify? <clears throat> Go to college earlier. What, what happened there? Uh, I, I just felt I was ready physically, and um, you know I was just willing to put in the work to make it happen. I, I knew it was going to be best for my future. Um, you know I didn't really feel the need to stick around and um, have another year of high school, so um, you know, I was willing to do whatever it took to um, make it happen. Does it feel? I, I don't know. What does it feel like that you're the youngest guy, you know, in the NFL right now, the first guy born? I think two thousand four. Two thousand four. Yeah. Um, no, it doesn't. I doesn't really have any feelings attached to it. It's kind of is what it is. You know, I know why I'm here. Um, I have a job to do, and um, let's just make this team is uh, is make this team better and do what I can to help us win. How much uh, how much pride do you take in the pass protection side of things? I know that's something a lot of people talk about during your game. Yeah, a ton, a ton. That was something you know, especially this past year um, that you know I wanted to improve in and. Um, you know, uh, kind of put that on tape, you know, show that I'm a physical pass protector and willing um, to do it. So I definitely uh, take a lot of pride in it and excited to, um, to to do a lot of it. How did it impact you at Wisconsin going from there, the offense you came in mm -hmm. with at Wisconsin to what they changed to? Uh, I think it, it definitely helped, you know, it allowed me to put more uh, different things on tape, you know, such as the pass protection, um, running some more routes, catching the ball a little bit more. Um, you know, a couple things I wasn't asked to do a whole lot in the first offense. 
Um, but you know, those two first ones, you know, they were they were two different teams in themselves. You know, the first year I played in the wide zone scheme, which is pretty similar to to you know, what we have here. But um, the next year was more gap, power, counter, things like that. And then you know, this past season was was the air raid. So playing three different schemes, and um, each one of them was you know a bit different. Um, so I think it just allowed me to you know expand my game in different areas and put more things on on tape. Were you a Packer guy growing up? Not really. No, I never liked uh, Wisconsin teams for some reason. So you weren't a Rodgers fan? I was a – no, I, a ton of respect for, for A-Rod. I mean, you know, even as – even not being a fan, you know, they're on every week um, in the living room. So um, you can't help but to, to watch and admire, you know, his, his greatness. So uh, it's crazy to be on the same team as him for sure. Yeah, I was going to ask, is it, you know, he was – I guess he was drafted the year after you were born, something yeah. like that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's crazy. Um, like I said, you know, just seeing him every week um, growing up in, in Wisconsin is um, to be on the same field as him, you know, eventually it will, will be a surreal feeling. But, um, you know, I've heard some stories, you know, you better do do your job or he's going to he's going to let you know. Um, so, you know, my my biggest thing will be to do my job to the best of my ability and, you know, um, not disappoint him <laughs> or anybody on, you know, on the team on the, or the staff. So, um, you know, that's that's my focus. Who was your team growing up? You know, I was kind of all over the place. I just like different players. Um, my favorite player, like, when I first started watching football was Victor Cruz. Um, so I was a, a little bit of a Giants fan growing up. And then um, when I got to high school and was playing defense, I was following a lot of um, Derwin James, Fred Warner, those guys. As far as the wrestling, how much does that help you keep your pad level low, which is important for a taller back? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it helps a lot. I mean, yeah, you're, you're in a super low stance, and um, that's kind of how you maneuver on the mat. So uh, I'd say it, it definitely helps. How much of a mental challenge is it all time to remind yourself to keep the pad level low? Uh, it's kind of natural, you know, not something you normally really have to think about. Um, you know, that's just the only way you're not going to get your head knocked off. So um, it's kind of natural after a while. When we were, uh, Sala was talking yesterday, he sort of indicated that they hope you'd be back for training camp, you know, if everything goes along according to plan. What are your thoughts and where things stand? Yes, sir. Um, I feel great. Um, just focusing on today. Uh, every day I got rehab, I'm just giving my best. Um, I mean, I'm just trying to get ready uh, as fast as possible. Obviously, that's the goal. But obviously, I want to be 100% too. So, I mean, yeah, just trying to get 100% and getting better every day. What has the rehab process been like for you? What do they have you doing? Yeah, I mean, I've been doing a lot of different things. I'm moving a lot, squatting, doing a little bit of everything, um, gradually working back into it. So it's been good. Have you uh, met, talked to, texted, whatever, with Aaron and Tara? I have not. I have not. Um, I look forward to meeting them next week. Um, yeah, I've, I've heard a lot about him from Coach Downing and Coach Hewlett, so I mean, it's going to be fun for sure. Robert said yesterday, Robert Solomon said yesterday, he wants you to just keep asking him questions until, you know, okay. help you out as much as possible. Is that the way you are? Are you someone who observes? Do you ask what you know? What's, what's your process? Yeah, I do a little bit of everything. Um, I observe a lot. I watch every little thing that they do. Um, uh, yeah, but I'm going to ask a lot of questions for sure because obviously, I mean, you have two great quarterbacks ahead of you, and you could, I've been looking up to them for a long time and watching them for a long time, so I have the opportunity just to pick their brains every single day, see how they treat their teammates, see how they carry themselves off and on the field. So I look forward to it for sure. How would you describe the situation you're coming into? Like A lot of people outside are like, oh, it's the perfect situation for him. He gets to like ease himself back in. Some people might say, no, the perfect situation. I want to compete to be a starter somewhere. Yeah. Like, how do you look at the situation coming into where you know you're the third guy, but coming off an injury, that might be a good thing? Yeah, I mean, it's a dream come true at the end of the day. Um, it's an opportunity for me to get better. Um, that's, what, that's what I look at every single thing as. God has a plan for me. Um, every day I wake up, I mean, I just got to be the best person I could be, best teammate I can be. I just want to be the best that I can be in everything I do. Um, so, I mean, it's a dream come true to be here. Um, I love it here. I love the coaches here, and I can't wait to meet all the teammates for sure. You talked about getting better. Uh, what does that look like, and what do you think you need to improve on? Uh, everything. You can always get better in everything you do. Um, the person I am, uh, the football player I am, I mean, studying the game, learning about defenses, um, getting to know my teammates. There are so much things I can get better at, so look forward to it. You were up there with five other quarterbacks who were 
throw and I saw you had a ball in your hand, you were like kind of like pump faking or doing, yeah. doing. What's that like to be on the field again? And then I guess are you kind of like trying to hold yourself back? You obviously wanted the ball in your hand. Yeah. So like just what's that like when you're watching five other guys do your job? Um, Man, God has a plan once again. So I'm just thankful um, to have a ball in my hand again and have a helmet on my head. So, I mean, I'm grateful. I'm watching those guys throw. I mean, I love it. I love seeing guys compete. Um, just wanted to get better, so it was, it was cool for sure. Was there, when you had the injury, was there ever a doubt at any point from the time you were injured to afterward that you, did, you thought maybe you wouldn't be able to play again? Was there? Never. Um, I mean, I, I love adversity. I love waking up every single day and having to make a choice. Um, it just makes the story a, a whole lot cooler. I've, I've always said that um, from, the day, from the day I broke my leg um, until now. So I, I love it, man. Um, so, no, there's never been a doubt in my mind. So how did you get through that tough time, especially considering that was the end of your career for the state? Yeah, um, I, have a, I have a great great supporting cast um, back home, my family, my friends. And they push me every single day. Um, they inspire me to be better. I mean, my mom goes to work from 8 to 5 every single day, so she inspires me. Um, yeah, man, God has a plan with, with anything you do in life, so I'm mean, I just look at it that way for sure. Do you ever play the what if game? Like, what, what would have happened if that didn't happen? Um, you try to sometimes, but I mean, I always fall back on God's plan. Um, so, yeah, not too much. What did your mom do? You? She's a nurse, sir. Did you see what Keon said about you uh, in the last couple of days? What, I think he called you the best quarterback in the country. What did that mean to you? It means a lot. Um, that's my guy. I mean, he made my job a whole lot easier um, having a guy like that at receiver. Um, he's a great player and a great person. Obviously, everyone's seen his personality now, which is which is pretty cool, too. Yeah, how, how were you able to stay patient? You know, yeah. like through this whole process, it's been a long process trying to get back. And yeah. like Ryan had said, you know, you're seeing guys throw, and just how do you balance like the end goal with the process that you're going through? Yeah, just take a day to day by day. Um, you can only control what you can control at the end of the day. So, I mean, that's what I focus on. I wake up in the morning. If God blesses me to wake up, and I can breathe and walk. I'm, I'm thankful. So, just taking it like that. Um, I mean, just taking it as an opportunity to get better every single day. Like I said. Um, we always talk about Florida State just getting one percent better, so that's the goal for me every single day. Were there any points that you wanted to kind of push it, and somebody had to just say, "Hey, just yeah. take it easy." Yeah, um, I got in stretch lines yesterday. Um, they pulled me out of there, so is there, I'm trying to get out there. Are you over Florida State getting robbed last year, or is that something you never get over? Um, yeah, man, I, I don't even get into that from from the day that it happened. I mean, it sucked for sure, but. Once again, God has a plan, and everything happens for a reason. Your play, or you want to go, your pl you, the play you got injured on was a hip drop tackle, which is now, as you know, outlawed in the NFL. Yeah. What did you? What do you, do you think? That's a dangerous tackle, and like, what's your opinion of it? And also, <laughs> um, having gone through it, yeah. Like, how do you feel about the league outlawing it? I don't even get into that, man. I mean, at the end of the day, I wasn't mad at the guy tackling me. It was football. Um, yeah, but I, I don't even get into that type of stuff. You, I mentioned Keon uh, complimenting you. I mean, I don't know. You guys are new to this. That's Jets Bills. Like, you're not supposed to compliment the other guy. On Is there? Seat, right? are you, have you guys, uh, what's the relationship with you guys going to be like now that you're on opposite ends of a rivalry? I mean, that's my brother um, for forever, man. So, I mean, at the end of the day, when you get on a football field, it's different. Uh, it's all about competing. I want to beat you, and he wants to beat me at the end of the day. So that's what it comes down to, and I'm rocking with the Jets every single day. So I'm thankful to be here. Do you ever think about the possibility down the line, after you, you're healthy a few years from now, that you could be the guy that takes over for Aaron Rodgers? Yes, sir. Um, I do think about that a lot. Um, but right now, I'm just focused where my feet are, just getting healthy and I mean, getting everybody around me better, um, being a great teammate. And is there... Do you have any sense for where you would have been drafted, like where you would have fallen in the draft class if you weren't injured? No, sir. I have no idea. You I'm just happy I'm here. Yes, sir. So you see yourself as a starter in this league? Yes, sir. 100%. Yes, sir. What a lot of people point to, like Florida went through it, Florida State went through a down cycle when you first got there, and then under you and everyone else kind of rebounded like a renaissance. A lot of people credit you. What do you, what do you think it's about you that enabled that whole thing to flip and 
changed the culture there? What is it about your personality or leadership that allowed that? Um, well, I definitely say that I couldn't do it without any of my teammates and my coaches and our fan base that were that was behind us. Um, so all credit to my teammates. I mean, they pushed me every single day to be a better person, a better player. But I mean, the leader I am. I mean, I'm just the same person every day, just consistent in everything I do. Um, just a guy that just works hard, never late for anything, treats everybody with respect. So yeah, that's the main thing for sure. What's the uh, last week been like for you? Um, it's been a blessing, man. Like I said, it's a dream come true. Um, you know, being here, you know, I've always had a goal in mind to uh, you know, play in the NFL. So, um, you know, I'm blessed to be here in New Jersey with the Jets. And like I said, it's everything I ever wanted. So, yeah, have you uh, spoken with Brees Hall yet? And if so, just kind of what those conversations were like? Oh, uh, yeah, he was in the locker room this morning. I chopped it up. Uh, I was just saying, like, what's up? He had to go a little bit. He was in a rush. So, I'm um, just kind of, you know, talking to him, short conversation, just hopping out a little bit. So, Robert Sala was talking yesterday to us, just talking about the physical presence that you got, you bring, and Braylon brings at, along with Malachi as rookies to this team. And he said that's something when I hope, we hope permeates, you know, the entire building. It, when, when you hear the coach talking about that, like as a rookie being able to influence maybe the team in that way, what's that? Kind of like for you. I mean, I guess it's just a standard you got to live by, play the game by. Um, you know, I've always played a game of physicality, and so uh, I feel like we did a good job at SDSU doing that. So just you know, coming here, doing the same thing, you know, certain dominance, and you know, and it felt a physical game. So uh, running back, special teams, whatever it may be, just you know, certain dominance and being physical. I read an interesting stat about you that like more than half of your career hundred yard rushing games came in the FCS playoffs. When backs are usually wearing down at the end of the season, how do you explain that? Um, I mean, game on the line. Um, you kind of get the ball in your hands a little more in certain situations. Um, you know, during the season, um, you know, you might be up by a certain amount of points, or you're not playing as much from who you're playing for your other opponent. So, um, you know, in the playoffs, you, you kind of go to your guys and who they depend on. And you know, I'm blessed to be the guy that they gave the ball to in the certain situations, and you know, I try to make the best out of it. You After your 500 carries the last two years, how fresh do you feel? coming into the league? I feel better than ever. Like these last couple months preparing, you know, being down in Texas training, uh, I feel like my body um, in general is just the best I've ever felt. You mentioned the physicality. Just kind of where did that come from, like that part of your game? Um, I feel like that's all I've ever known, you know. Uh, I feel like my dad taught me that as a running back, um, you know, just from, from a young kid, uh, you know, watching, looking up to uh, running backs in the league, you know, I grew, I grew up watching DeMarco Murray, and so uh, watching his physicality, that's uh, something I always loved to watch. Um, so I just kind of learned from him and other running backs growing up. What uh, is it? It's a little unique for you because, like, you're here with another draft pick at your position. Were you surprised when the Jets picked you after they picked Braylon? And what's it been like being here? Like, I guess you guys are going to learn together, but eventually you're also going to be competing with each other for snaps. Uh, no one's surprised. Um, you know, everything happens for a reason. You know, guys are playing for me. Um, you know, I feel like I, was, I feel we're supposed to fall. And like I said, I'm blessed to be here. Um, you know, whatever happens, happens, you know. Um, like I said, I'm blessed, fighting for the same spot as Braylon. Um, but, you know, i got to find, find a role in this team, uh, find a way to help this team win, um, whether that's running back, special teams, uh, whatever it may be. Um, I hope in these next couple months, like, you know, I can find a way uh, to make, make on this team and find a way to win. You said you, uh, the NFL was always a dream of yours. It says here that, forgive me if this is inaccurate, that you were a zero-star recruit who wasn't even ranked in Missouri's top 75 recruits in the 2020 class, and it was st you still believed the NFL was possible. Uh, Obviously, those guys got it wrong. I mean, yeah. Uh, like I said, I've always had a dream. I mean, I come out of high school and had two offers. Um, you know, one was for running back at SCSU, and one was to play a linebacker at MSSU. And um, you know, the reason why I went to SCSU was just the culture, the family, the bond, and I took a chance on it. But um, you know, I never lost, um, you know, doubt myself. And part of this whole journey, the process, um, I feel like the reason why you know I've came with as far as I have is just because I've always had like little you know, doubt myself, which made me just be so much more hungrier and uh, work on the things that I struggle with. And I feel like it's been a big part of my success in this journey. So how do you stay driven doing when you have doubters and people that don't believe in you? Um, to be honest, man, I just you know focus on what I can focus on um, the, the controllables, and you know I don't really worry about the outside noise, what people think. Uh, in the day, it's me versus me. Um, I got to find a way to be the be best version of myself every single day, and um, you know just you know not paying attention to the outside noise because in the, the day it really doesn't matter. And just focus on myself and find ways to improve myself, whether that be nutrition, mobility, and weight room. 
uh, outside resources, you know, people above me, so like going to Breeze and Aaron. So you know, just finding ways to you know better myself every single day. I think you had a four five seven at the combine, right? And yet you had over fifty runs of ten or more yards. How, how does that? Do you get so many long, run, long runs for a guy who, you know, doesn't have the quote-unquote 4-4 speed? Um, to be honest, I got to give it to my O-line. Um, like I said, I got two guys this year who got picked up, and, um, you know, I got to give all the credit to them, um, the game plan and everything. So it made my job so much easier. You know, run to the left side, right side. Um, you know, we had, like, a special culture, special bond there, uh, special trust. So, you know, I could always believe in them. They believed in me, and, you know, we always found a way to make it work. You were sitting back there. When Jordan Travis was talking, and obviously uh, you've been in meetings and whatnot with him, what's your first impression of the rookie quarterback around here? Real good, genuine dude. Uh, we got, we're sharing locker, not sharing locker, we're next to next to lockers. So um, great dude. You know, haven't spoken to him too much, but the conversations we have, um, it's like a, a great guy. You know, uh, good guy for culture, good guy for his team, and you know, someone I look forward to working with on this team. Thank you. Thank you. Quantez Stiggers, reporter for duty. <laughs> Start questions. How did it feel to be out there wearing an NFL jersey and helmet and all that stuff? It's still surreal for me. Um, never thought I'd be here. Uh, thankful for the opportunity that Jet, the Jets give me to further my career. Can you talk about your journey because it's, it's fascinating. Yeah. The, the fact that you are here today. Long story short, you want the whole thing. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I um, under recruited in high school. Uh, kind of like a smaller kid that went to a smaller high school in the city. Um, had a couple offers from from some NAIA schools like uh, uh, Allen and Reinhardt University. Ended up getting an a offer from Lane College of D two. I committed there, uh, and committed there in uh, maybe like February. And then my dad got into a car accident in September. I mean, no, no. My dad got into a car accident in February. I graduated from high school in, August, in May, reported to Lane in August, and he passed in September, so I dropped out, uh, came home, be close to my siblings. I got 13 siblings, including my step-siblings, 11 boys, two girls. So did that. Um, worked from, from the time I was out of dropped out. Then um, my mom signed me up for this league called Fan Control. Went there, won co defensive player of the year. Got an opportunity to play in the CFL. Went there, won CFL Rookie of the Year, and then um, a lot of people asked me like, uh, "What's my what's 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 my plan?" I was like, uh, "Honestly, just just play ball." And then I got an opportunity to play in the NFL. So of course, uh, the Toronto Argonauts supported me through this whole process and, and helped me and guided me to get here. Did you know you'd be draft eligible? Like it's unusual, right? From the CFL, did, did someone tell you like? This is the path, like to go to the Shrine Bowl, and, and when did that kind of come into focus for you that you could do this? Uh, once, once we figured out that I was draft eligible, honestly, I was really just looking for opportunity, whether it was drafted or undrafted. I just wanted the opportunity. Who, who figured out that you were draft eligible? Like, uh, my agent, Fred Lyles. Okay. Were you the oldest of the thirteen? Is that why you wanted to come home and, and work and help out? No. Nah, so actually, I'm I'm number number five. So my, my oldest my oldest brother he was at school in, in Michigan, on a, uh, where he where he went to school at and um, you know I kind of let him do his thing I came home you know be closer to my brothers and my mom and my sisters. When you were working, what were you doing? Uh, I had a, I had multiple jobs. I was a car salesman, car mechanic, uh, DoorDash, Instacart, warehouse jobs. I was I was doing it all. What's it like growing up in a house with that many siblings? Uh, so I didn't I didn't. So, so I, only people that lived with me until my uh, eighth grade year was it was me, Ray Corn, Ray Devon, and Tay. And then I think like ninth grade, that's when my step stepdad and his kids moved in. So it was just like you know you get in where you fit in. <laughs> yeah. Did you uh, did you think you were done with football at that point, like completely when you left Lane and everything like that? Um, I mean no, because I was still going doing like I went to the scrum event. Uh, after I left the scrum event, I went to another event, won $500. Um, I was still working out with my little brothers, still keeping them in shape, still running the hills. Because so, I was never done with it. It was just like I had to put it on delay to focus on my, my mental health. Right, but you said you never thought you'd be here, right? Right. So what got you here? Uh, all glory to God, honestly. for All glory to God and my mom and fiance for you know helping me get out of my depression. The 
fan control league. I mean, how did you? How did that even come about? I think it was like, like wasn't Manzel in that? Yeah. Like Johnny was in it. So I mean, how did you find that? How did your mom find that? How did you get involved in that? She was just scrolling on Facebook, honestly, and then she sent it to me. I showed up to the little the little tryout they had. Did a good job there. A couple of days later, they sent me a contract. Um, went there, did my first game. The crazy part, first game, I had three interceptions and a touchdown. Like it might sound unbelievable, but I had three interceptions. It's, 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 look, look it up. <laughs> three interceptions and a touchdown, and then that was all she wrote from there. At what point in the process did you start thinking like maybe this could happen? Uh, so I think it was like week fifteen. Uh, the Seahawks reached out, and then the Giants, then the Steelers. And then that's when I had got an American agent because I had a CFL agent. I got an American agent. And then it was just coming. So when you when you went to the CFL, it wasn't like to try to, to get here? It was just like, let's see what, what happens there? Or? I was just trying to ball, honestly. I just missed playing football. I, I missed catch, catching interceptions. Uh, like I said, man, Argos gave me an opportunity that, you know, most, most, most uh, organizations wouldn't, wouldn't give individuals. When did you find out that you were NFL draft eligible? When you were in Canada after the Canadian season, what was the timeline of when you actually found out you could be drafted? Yeah, so when I found out, it was – I actually found out the day I won Rookie of the Year. They had told me, like uh, – my agent called me. was like, yeah, just just let you know, heads up. Uh, you're draft eligible, but don't talk about it. Just, you know, just talk about the CFL and stuff like that, and that's what I did. And, you know, forever thankful for the opportunity that the CFL gave me. You, you talked about you know, dealing with your mental health and um, with your dad's passing and all that. How long did it take you to kind of get into that mind space where, okay, I can move forward, I can do that? Was that during the time that you were doing different jobs? Or yeah. you know, what was that process for you? So after my dad passed, I didn't come out of the house for six months. I was just in the house getting fat, eating ice cream. And then uh, my fiance said, Nah, my fiance, my brother told me, like, and the words still stick me today, he told me that nobody feels sorry for me. So after he told me that, I'm like, you right. So I got up and started working and started working back out, and here we are. You saw, uh, you saw the draft call video and it showed Coach Old, Jeff Ulbrich, like, near tears talking to you, the security guard. Like, what, what does it mean that you're coming to an organization that clearly cares about your journey as much as they do? It means everything, man. I, I kind of I already knew I wanted to be here. When I came on my visit, and then uh, you know, being in there with being in there with Bobby, it was just like, you know, he he asked me like, how are you here? Why are you here? I'm like, I'm, I'm, I got 13, 13 visits. He was like, for real? I was like, yeah. And then um, just thankful to be here, man. Thankful for the opportunity. Honestly, yes. You uh, you talked about your spirituality a little bit last week. Talked about getting saved and stuff. Yep. Like that. Uh, how has that gotten you to this point? So the crazy part, I went back home. Supposed to got saved, but pastor got sick. So <laughs> all glory to God. You where did that come you, from? You, where did that come from? This stems from as far as your relationship with God. Uh, he's part of the reason that we all here. So you know, I might not go to church every day or speak or read the Bible every day, but you know, all glory to God. You said your your you high school ends. You got D two offer. It was kind of the, the the best opportunity you had to go from that to excelling the way that you did in the fan control league. But then also the CFO, which is pretty some, that's legitimate competition. Yep. That jump, yet your play improved so substantially after taking some time off. I and mean, what what do you credit to that? To to the jump in your play, or was it just you were finally given the opportunity and? and this is what you did with it. Yeah, uh, honestly, really just making everybody pay. A lot of people passed up on me because I was, you got to realize, I played kicker, ninth and 10th grade year. I was 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, 11th grade year, I was 5'6". And then my 12th grade year, that's when I jumped to six feet. I started doing, like, just crazy stuff, like dunking basketballs, hitting home runs, jumping over people. So it was just like everybody that missed out on me, now they got to pay. Um Another thing, the test scores, what they got now for high schoolers, and I'm not sure if it's everywhere, but they got kind of got it good because test scores are optional now. You know, when I came out and committed, uh, some D, D1 schools came back around, but they was, you know, they was going for like the two star, three stars guys. So I was just like, all right, they'll pay, they'll pay, they'll pay in the long run. You've talked a lot about everything that's happened to you. Was there a reflective moment for you, like when you got here, when it was 
you were finally here and like this is for real? Yeah. Uh, get on get on the plane to come here. Um, I kind of just put my headphones on, put go to my Apple Music, put on Calm playlist, and I was just close my eyes and taking everything in. And then when I got here to put my helmet on, I was like, I'm here. And then I there, out there running today, felt like my dad was out there with me. We here. The CFL has some pretty good receivers. Uh, who was some of the guys you went up against and who was some of your tougher matchups? Um, let's see. Dalton Schoen from Winnipeg. Uh, real, real, real good guy. Real rock technician. Uh, it's kind of hard to say. Probably Austin Matt. Cause me and him, we 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 won it all season. So him, probably him. Congratulations on him getting signed to the Falcons too. Yep. Have you spoken to Sauce or DJ Reed yet, or any of those guys? I haven't spoke to Sauce, but he mentioned me on Twitter. So that's kind of, kind of, kind of heartwarming. What was that high school like? You went to the best academy. Yep. What kind of football program did they have? And is it, was that a STEM school? Can you tell us about your high school? Yeah, so basically my high school is a public school. Some people might think it's a private school, but it's a public school. But it's just all, all boys. You got a boys' school, you got the girls' school. But I think we had like 27 people on the, t on the football team. My graduating class was 62 people. I graduated, I graduated top 10. <laughs> Everybody get me? Thank you, Go Jets, baby. Did you get to go to Disney yet for the parade? When is that? I haven't got to go, go on yet. Uh, we've been pretty much in the ground since we got here, but uh, I think towards the end of June, maybe, we'll be heading out there. I'll be heading out there. Is that kind of a like a cool but like weird twist on this whole you know draft journey that you were on? Right, right. It, it's kind of cool. I, I wouldn't really call it weird, but it's definitely kind of cool for you. You to be kind of recognized for a week, go out, go out to Disney, uh, play some golf, get on the beach, things of that nature. So it's pretty cool to have a trip. That's pretty much all about you. That's, yeah, that's, that's the coolest week. part, right? Whole week, right. Mr. Relevant week. <laughs> you say like you're really embracing uh, just being Mr. Relevant. Just talk about what the last week has been like for you. Uh, it hasn't been it hasn't been bad honestly. You could come in and, and just been around the guys, been around other rookies, been able to like just go through the process of, of being a new guy and then just being Mr. Relevant kind of. It's kind of something that, that you just get used to quick because everybody, hey, Mr. Relevant, walk, walk, why are you walking around the facility? Mr. Relevant. So, 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 the teammates, so your teammates are calling you Mr. Relevant. <laughs> definitely, definitely. <laughs> so it's something you get used to like quick, uh, but it's definitely something you embrace. I mean, I like it. People back home calling you that yet? Yeah, I, I got some people from back home calling me Mr. Relevant. So <laughs> I guess we got to roll with it. Uh, just talk about your skill setting, uh, what you bring to the table. Just playmaker, physicality, being able to turn the ball over, everything that you want in the safety range, being able to get sideline to sideline. When you went from UAB, that's where you were, right? UAB right. To Alabama, did you know you what, – what did they tell you? Like, did you know you were going to have a chance to compete for a starting job? Were you guaranteed a starting job? Did you – were you like, did you start off fourth on the depth chart and have to win it? Like, how, what was the story there? All right. So, I mean, going to Alabama, the place that it is, uh, everything you hear, that's, that's what it is. So, going in, of course, you're not promised anything at all. You're promised, hey, you can come in and compete for a starting job. Uh, coming in, I, I was third on the depth chart pretty much. So, coming in, going through summer, uh, you got like seven on sevens, close, close to basically like OTAs, which what we have here. But um, seven on sevens, I was third, like start of camp. I was still third on the depth chart. And maybe like by the first scrimmage, I was starting. So, like just a chance to go in and compete at the highest level in college against the, the, the best talent in the country was what I was promised. And it lived up to it. We kind of talked about this uh, when you were drafted, but just the way Alabama prepared you, especially going up against the talent. Right. Uh, each day, just how did that uh, help you become the player that you are? Right. So definitely, that, that's one of the biggest things. Kind of me going there was going against the talent every day that prepares you for the next level. Ultimately, where I am now, um, and then also just preparation as far as how you pre prep for Saturdays was was big going into Alabama because you have to prep for Saturdays like. It's the last Saturday. Everybody's out to get you. So you have to go in, know what you're doing, know adjustments that can come, know everything in the playbook that goes in that week. So I say preparation of going against 
the best talent in the country every day. That, that was a big part. So uh, at Alabama, just what is who is like some of the toughest players that you went up against with some of your teammates? I mean, every day of practice, you're going against Jermaine Burton. You're going against Isaiah Ibe. He, he's at Texas now. Uh, you're going against guys like Justin Justice Haynes. Every day in practice, Jam Miller. It, it's a list of. It keeps going. Kobe Prentice. <laughs> It just keeps going. So, I mean, whether you're one, two, or three, you're going against the best. So, it don't matter. Did, did the Jets talk to you about that, you know, that you had to fight, keep fighting for that spot and became a starter? Was that, did they say anything about that when they were talking to you about, you know, that that's the kind of makeup of a player we want here, right. that kind of thing? Right, right, definitely. So, so that tenacity that you bring to, to the table every day, to, to be scra uh, scratching, clawing at a star starting job, fighting every day, compete. That, that's what the game is about, and that's what you embrace about the game. That's what you. At, at the end of the day, once you go through something and, and then you have to compete for it, that's that's what you hold on to when it comes down to it. So that's one of the best parts of the game that that you love, fall in love with. Does Saban coach his DBs as hard as his reputation is? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So, so he, so he's with us every day. He's in the front row of our meetings every day. Uh, if you mess up on film, you're gonna hear about it. If you mess up on the field, you're gonna hear about it. So, he coach, he coach you pretty hard, and that's how you want it. At the end of the day, it, it makes you the best player that you can be. Squeeze everything out of you. So that's that's his mentality. He goes in with you, the same person every day, and he forces you to be that same person every day with consistency. Does he just hold like everybody accountable to like the same standard? Is that the same standard? He, he don't change. <laughs> he might like you, but he gonna hold you to the same standard. It, it don't change. Freshman, senior, it don't change. You mentioned some of the great teammates you went against in practice. There's a guy you went against across town here in New York, uh, Malik Neighbors. Right. I think you played at UAB and at Alabama. Right. right? What uh, just obviously there's a lot of football fans in the state. What was it like going against Malik Neighbors? How tough was he? Definitely. So so just. Been a complete receiver, a uh, speedy guy that can get down the field, can catch the ball very well in the air. Um, I mean, that, that's all you want in a receiver. And then his quarterback, Jane Daniels. <laughs> hey, so you're getting the best of both worlds when you're going against those two. So.